Uh, so partly we need to think about what happened and what uh, brought the region to the uh, explosion that we call the Arab Spring. And I think uh, I think of it as kind of the final unraveling of the social contract, which uh, I refer to as the authoritarian bargain that was struck between the regimes and their populations. And that social contract basically said we are going to be uh, if you do certain things, we're going to take care of you, you're going to be included, especially if you get an education, you're going to join the middle class, primarily through the, uh, a government job. And But in return, you don't question the authority of the regime. You don't have voice in terms of where the countries are going. And that social contract uh, worked for the 60s and the 70s, and then it started becoming eroded from the government side where people got an education, but they didn't get the government jobs. The government jobs were slow to come, and they kept queuing, waiting for these government jobs, which explains the very high unemployment rates. So you really want a formal job. Most formal jobs are in the government. The private sector is considered to be captured by the cronies of the regime, and you only get those jobs if you're connected. And so if you want to join the middle class, you get a government job. But as the government jobs were no longer forthcoming, the youth felt more and more frustrated. And uh, high unemployment rates are just one side of that frustration, but general sense of exclusion from. Uh, so eventually that level of frustration by educated youth is what led to the Arab Spring. It's not the poor who joined the Arab Spring. They've been excluded for a long time, and they never expected to be part of the, that social contract. And so uh, it, it's, the, it's the young people who played by the rules of the game and then uh, found themselves to be, uh, to be the, on, on the outside. Uh, 